All right, I got a top 10 list for you today. Everybody likes those top 10, uh, the top 10 things you should never do with this and that. So today we're gonna tell you top 10 things you need to do to take care of your cowboy hat or the top 10 things you know you shouldn't do. The top 10 most important things to follow as far as doing things and not doing so I do you know whether to call it the top 10 things not to do or the top 10 things to do because there's kind of both of them in here so we're going to call it the top 10 western hat care tips it's not as catchy but we'll figure something out maybe you guys can tell me a better title for this video but um keep the long story medium size um I got uh, 10 things that, you know, some of them we've discussed, some of them maybe we didn't. Uh, I'm sure if you're an avid uh, Kevin watcher, you probably know all of these things already. And if you're, you know, a, a new guy to the, uh, to the family, welcome, you know, to the bunch. We're all kind of a, a nutty, funny, happy, cool bunch here. And we like hats, guitars, some of us just hats, you know some of us hats and guitars, but uh, most of you put up with my guitar playing. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys fast forward it. But uh, I'm gonna do a little song and then we're gonna get into the top 10 list, okay? So this is uh, an Elton John song. Yeah. 
something a little more rocking but uh, trying to work on my uh, trying to work on my singing that's kind of one of my personal uh, goals bucket list kind of things I figure if I sing like you know a song a week at least it'd be better if I sing a song a day but uh, as long as I do that at least once a week I figure by you know at least a year I'll be a little better singer you know I've got to be you know Especially when you're under the gun, you know, you're doing it like without rehearsal, in front of, you know, a thousand people, um, no editing, I never edit, I never cut anything. So uh, I don't even chop off like bad endings and bad beginnings, you know, where it takes a second to do that, I leave everything in. So that's just my style of making, uh, yeah, no, you know, I like behind the scenes stuff and I think you guys should always be behind the scenes that's why I leave my window open so you can you know, get the feeling what Queens is like out there and stuff as far as hills all right let's get back on this here subject Too bright? That'll work out. We'll, we'll figure it out. All right. Yeah, it's weird. No matter where I go, different places, it kind of gets lighter or darker. Technology, right? All right. Here we go. Number one. Here's a. You know, let me grab a hat because it might be better to sort of demonstrate with. You know, even though it's not a Western hat, you know, I need to show you a gram or a reed or that. Okay. Number one. We know about this a lot because I talk about this all the time. Number one, I had to put this one first. Store your hat correctly. Store your hat upside down on its crown or hang it or put it in the box which is upside down, sitting in a ring upside down. So upside down is good. Hanging it up is good. Laying it down on like, like this is bad. Don't put it on the brim. That's it. Okay, it's real easy. No weight on the brim. Uh, if you have something that's like this, every time you leave it on the brim, this is getting softer and softer, and this is losing its roll. But if it's just hanging or inverted, that part is just sort of floating in the air, so nothing, nothing's affecting it. There's no weight on it. And the hat stays just as stiff. It doesn't soften up. So if you want to avoid the flat brims, the, the soft brims, the floppy brims, don't put the hat on its brims anymore. You know, flip it upside down or just like, you know, hang it up, whatever you feel better. In the box is always great. Um, this will be number 11, I guess. But when your hat gets wet, don't put it right back in the box, okay? It's better for you to hang it first or just invert it on the table. Let it dry, okay? Once the hat's completely dry, whatever, it takes a couple hours overnight, then put it back in your box, okay? Especially if you've got those plastic dust covers and stuff. You want the hat to dry, you know, and breathe and stuff, you don't want moisture to get caught inside there and you could get all kinds of things, you know, vegetation growing, mold, leather rot or whatever. Number two, stay away from heat when you're storing your hat. Heat is bad, okay? People always bring in hats that are a little tight and shrunken. They bring them in, hey, can you stretch this? You know, I get at least two a day, um, at least every single day. Uh, you get a walking guy, my hat's tight, and you, you say to him, this is what I always say, you haven't worn it in a while, I bet, right? Yeah, how did you know? That's what happens. Um, when you don't wear your hat a while, the sweat and the, you know, the oils from the human body and stuff just don't, you know, the heat, everything, it keeps it conditioned in a natural way. 
um, when you don't wear it, the leather dehydrates in the heat. So if you've got a regular house in New York, New Jersey, whatever, Massachusetts, any place up north, Maine, where you get snow, Minnesota, you know, any of those uh, Wisconsin y places, you're going to be blasting the heat during the winter. Um, if you're pumping the heat, that is when the leathers shrink and they dry up. If you have a hat and the leather inside looks kind of like that, you get this kind of thing happening. So in other words, your leather's not flat against the surface, there's like these ripples. That's dehydration. When you see that thing in your bands, the band just looks a little, you know, kind of wavy like that, instead of just being flat. That means the leather has shrunk due to you not wearing it and keeping it in a hot environment. It's uh, slow. You know, it's a, a millimeter every whatever, I don't know how many years, but um, super, super slow. But the longer you do it, the worse it gets. And um, after that, I'm going to just say when your hat is wet, you have to be very, very careful to put it away from heat. That's also the most important thing, when it's wet too. Um, don't let a wet hat dry in a hot room. It seems like, oh yeah, Kevin's just said hang it up. But wait a minute, it's winter. The heat is blasting. Ah, okay. What you got to do is another step. You have to open the window. You say, okay, it's cold in my house. I don't want to open the window. So do it in the bathroom or something. Open the window in the bathroom. Hang it. Let this thing air out. It doesn't have to be freezing in there. It just can't be hot. It can't be really hot in there. Uh, you know, when you come from outside and you walk in, there's that blasty heat. Ah, oh, I feel so warm. That's what's shrinking the leather, okay? And you get that ripply thing, it's no good. So no heat. In the off season, put it, you know, just whenever you can, put it in the coolest place of the house, whether that's your basement, keep it away from hot pipes, hot sunny areas, wherever it's gonna bake down. That leather is what dehydrates, usually not this. So when your hat shrinks, it's only this piece of leather that shrinks usually. Stretching it is a big pain. It's going to be hard for you to find somebody to stretch it in your area. And if you do, 99% of the people stretch it till it feels good and then you get on back exactly the same. You have to stretch it way past the point where it feels good. When I stretch a hat, I stretch it so big that the customers feel like all nervous. They're like, this guy overstretched it. And they're like, it's too big now. And I'm like, yeah, it's too big now. I told you it was going to be too big. That's what happens. I have to stretch it, overstretch it, because it's going to shrink back. I guarantee by the time you walk out that door, it's going to shrink up already. So there you go. Usually what I do is I take it off the stretcher and I try to do a whole bunch of stuff after that. I put the hat back together, I clean it, I get all the side effects and stretch marks out. Then when my whole process is done, I give them the hat and it's already shrunk back. But um, yeah, when it comes off the stretcher, it'll be huge when I do it. Like two, three, you know, like maybe it was a half size too tight. I'll make it like two, three sizes big. And he'll be like, what the, what's going on? This guy screwed my hat up. And I have to give him this look like, trust me, please, trust me. Trust me, I have not screwed one up yet. I'm here a quarter of a century. Just trust me. It's going to shrink back so much, you might have zero stretch. You might have nothing. So that's more like you know when i stretch it 60 percent and the guy wants like 10 percent when we're done we might have that 10 percent but we might have five percent we might have one percent we might have nothing but by the time it shrinks back it's there's just so much pressure it contracts it and the hat's all out of shape so this stretching is very inefficient and um that was a killer tangent wasn't that a good tangent guys i went off and i called these that like Anyway, yeah, out of the heat. Don't put it on the heat, guys, okay? All right. Number three, no baby powder, no cornstarch on silver belly hats. I don't care what you heard, it's bull. Don't do it. It's only for people who are never, ever going to get their hat wet. If your hat gets wet with baby powder, it gets all splotchy and orangey. It gets the color of uh, bare uh, aspirins. What are those? Uh, baby aspirins, if you crush that up into a powder and put it, it looks like that, like an orangey, orangey brown white color. And it's all splotchy and cloudy, almost like pit stains, like it looks like, like uh, when somebody sweats wearing right guard and it's 
stains your your shirt with these white like clouds and stuff. It's it's like that. Um, you cannot get any rain, any sort of moisture, even humidity. You know, like mist, a misty day. You can't get that on baby powder. It's for people who are like uh, you know doing rodeos or, or or horse shows or some kind of competitions and stuff where they want to powder their hat to make it perfectly white for a costume and they're never going to wear the hat for any kind of like outdoor stuff or you know maybe they live in Arizona and it hasn't rained there in you know a hundred years or something things like that no baby powder no corn starch um, no spray starch this is like kind of like number three A B and C no baby powder no corn starch no corn starch no spray starch people ask me all the time what about spray starch, Niagara starch, or the stuff that they use for uh, laundry? Can I use that to stiffen up my hat? Don't use it. Um, don't, don't, don't. Um, if you need to use something like that as a do-it-yourself kind of thing, um, that's cool, and I give you a lot of kudos for it, but don't use that stuff. Use something else. Use um, hairspray. What you got to use is the ultra super fine, uh, not ultra super fine, the ultra super hold. You know, the, they usually have regular and super. Get the super hold hairspray, or they call it ultra or whatever they call it. Get that strong kind. I use Rave, I use Suave, and I use Aquanet. Um, the old cans of Aquanet used to come out splashy, little drops. The new ones come out misty. So you can test it first. Make sure you're getting a good mist, not like a splash. I found that the splashy ones are dry and visible anyway, but um, if you feel weird about it, you can switch the cap to a different cap from another aerosol can that comes out more misty. Anybody who used to do graffiti when they were a kid knows about that. Like uh, Easy Off uh, Oven Cleaner has the fat cap, so when you see those uh, really big graffiti lines that are like this thick and you wonder how they spray paint it, that's what they do. They take Easy Off cans. They steal the top and then they put it in their Krylon and they spray with that. It's called a fat cap. So anyway, um, you could always change the cap on your hairspray if it's coming out splashy. Any brand will do. Um, you must dust the hat completely, meaning get some packing tape. You know what packing tape is, the box tape. Make rings out of it. You've got to use at least five rings. Don't be lazy with this. Maybe you can use 10, 15, 20 rings. You have to get every single bit of dust off this hat. Every bit. Get it off everywhere. Get it off of the brim. Get it off of the crown. Get it off the underside. Get it off of the edge. Keep going. Get it in here until every single speck of dust and lint is gone. Because if you're going to spray stiffener, all those dusts are going to get stuck under that plasticky coating you're making. It's invisible, but you can't get the dust out. It's there forever. So, when you spray stiffener, dust your hat like crazy so it's 100% dust free. If you have to over dust it, just keep doing it and doing it and doing it until you're positive it's clean. Then spray. The other thing is you have to cover up this leather when you're stiffening. You can't get hairspray on this. It'll be sticky. I've never done it, so it's not hard to avoid it. What I do is I put a hat jack in. A hat jack has a piece of wood like here and a piece of wood here. It's only got two little openings on the side here and here. But I use the little bar here as a handle and I hold it with one hand and I spray with the other and the hat jack covers up the leather. Now, most likely you don't have hat jacks there. Hat jack is a good tool, but it's like 30, 35 bucks or something. You don't need it. You can just cover up this leather any way you can. The cheapest and easiest way is to make a big ball of tissue, like bowling ball size or head size. Get as much tissue paper as you can. Anything will work, saran wrap, tissue paper, foam paper from you know box stuffing, newspaper, that's the cheapest magazines, it doesn't matter. I'd rather you not use newspaper and magazines because they have ink. I'd rather use any kind of paper. Just stuff it, stuff it. If you don't have anything paper handy to make a big ball, then just use cloth. Use most, most of the cloth, some kind of like old t-shirts that you don't care about. Stuff it in here so that the leather is covered. That's it. An old t-shirt just put it in there some people you know recommended using painters tape I don't like doing that I've never done it 
I just cover it up with a hat jack or, you know, all a big bowl of tissue. Then I spray the underside of the brim with one thin, even coat. Like, you know, this far, like, I, I kind of go like this. I go, and then I go on the bottom, you know, maybe on the sides. Get it once evenly. You don't want to get tons of spray on it, but, you know, a nice even coat. Put it upside down, let it dry. Um, you can get a fan on it if you're in a rush, put a fan on it. And from that point, you could even start, you know, straightening your brim if you want, because it's drying now and stiffening up. But what I like to do generally after that is I hit it with steam, and I hit it like this on a straight edge, and I use that. Let me see, let me get a straight edge for you. Alright, let's say this is a tabletop here, the straight edge. What I'll do is I'll take the, um, the hat and I'll go like this on it. So I'll steam it, soften it up, hold it like that so it's right on the tabletop. And I'm not pushing down on it. I don't want to flatten out the brim. I want to keep the arc of the brim, but I want the edge of the brim to be flat, a straight edge. So I'm using the table as a straight edge. Anybody who's an artist knows about that. You know, if you're making straight lines, you try to use some kind of thing like a ruler. If you don't have a ruler, use a straight edge. You get the edge of a magazine or something, you know, anything that's straight. This is a straight edge. Okay, so while your hat is getting stiffened, it's getting harder and harder. You let that spray dry. Then you take it, you put it on a straight edge while it's steamed for a few seconds. It's softening and quickly drying again. Put it like that. Let it dry with the arc and the the edge of it is totally straight. Okay. You let go, then you do over here. You turn it and you do over here. You know, you rotate it. That way you get a very straight edge to your brim, just using the top of your desk or you know, top of a counter or a table. It's a little very light, just the weight of the hat on there. Maybe even not the full weight of the hat. You want the edge of the brim to be totally flush on the on the tabletop, but that's it, just the edge. All right, let's get back to my uh, list of Ronnie here. Where was I, right? Mm -hmm. Put the hat down for a second. Next on my list, oh yeah, also, no spray starch, no leather conditioner, okay? You don't want leather conditioner on here, don't do it. Some of these leathers, they're, they're full grain leathers, most of them are split grain leathers. You've got all types of different finishes on there. Some of the finishes are kind of like painted finishes. Um, and when you start using certain oil-based products, the oil kind of starts rubbing away that black finish of this like leather. It's like some kind of, it's almost like shoe polish it seems like. And then it starts coming off. So you get this little bald spot, you know, and the leather color becomes loose, and then there's a chance it'll get on your head and stuff, and you don't want to get black on your face, and then if it starts raining, black drips down on you or something. Don't break that. There's like a seal on here, you know? Inside the leather, they, they seal it with something. And when you start rubbing with oil-based things, it kind of like, it breaks the seal and then almost like the color kind of I don't I'm not really a leather maker I don't know how they tan leather and, and color it and stuff but I've seen it happen once or twice in my youth when I first got the job I tried doing it and I said never again um, it's not every piece of leather I'm sure but um, I do remember that happening once and I regretted it I had to put a JJ Ad Center sticker over it on the uh, leather sweatbands because you know I damaged somebody's sweatbands God, if it was mine or if it was somebody else's, though. Long time, 25 years ago or a little less, maybe. All right. Um, here's the other thing. Western hats, okay? Western hats are stiff. They're not like a fedora. A fedora is like, you know, it's soft. When you hit the edge of a fedora, when it's too soft, when it's too small, this is what happens. It bends with you and the brim starts getting cockeyed. It doesn't sit right. You're too small for this hat. This is what happens. The brim gets all cockeyed. It looks horrible. Okay, but you can get the hat on. Now with a western hat, you just hit a wall. It doesn't bend. There's no flex, and the flex is you have to be super strong, you know, to flex it. It doesn't really flex. Okay, 
So Western hats, they run differently, okay? I mean, you can hang up a Western hat. Sometimes hanging up a dress hat might be so soft that it will dry like that. So, you, you know, you got to treat soft hats differently. You know, I'd invert this one. Um, Western hats are so stiff that they're going to run differently. Um, I'm going to say like this. They may run the same, like a Stetson 718 dress hat and a Stetson Western 718 will be the same but one will flex so much more and the other you stomp and hit a wall so they don't feel the same so technically they're running the same but it feels like it doesn't run the same okay that's what I'm getting at basically um, yeah so buy buy westerns a little big if you're in doubt you don't know if you're you know this size or that size go bigger and not smaller that's what I'm getting at all right um, Felt hats, westerns are good in the rain, okay? Felt are fine. If you got a real western, it's fur felt, it's a you know cowboy hat, it's thick, wear it in the rain. Western straws, you cannot. You cannot wear western straws in the rain. They're very plasticky, they'll take a few rains, yes, yes. But as that plasticky coating on the shantong starts breaking down, the water goes into it, and it starts getting into the, and inside there is paper. Shantung or western straws are basically paper. It's like wood fibers or paper fibers, the natural fibers that they kind of, you know, weave into a straw and they coat it with a very thick, lacquery, plasticky coating. Once you get through that coating, you're screwed. So, yeah, don't, don't get them wet. Leave your straws at home if it's going to rain. That's what I'm going to say. Use your felts. All right, number seven. Oh, yeah. Um, I think I got into this. Yeah, I started going off on a tangent. I said if your hats get soft, you can stiffen them. Uh, use hairspray, dust it, and this and that. Especially the Shantung hats that I just talked about. Western straws are going to start off hard as glass. Like, as they start getting sweated on, uh, rained on, this and that, they're going to start turning into paper. Literally. They're going to get so soft that they just flop down like a pillowcase. That's their their lifespan. You know what I'm talking about. If you've ever had one, you know, for years or decades, they get super soft. Use the hairspray on Western straws, okay? It's an essential tool. Just get it. Don't doubt what I say. Just trust me. If your Western starts getting soft, hang it up, okay? Dust it with a brush real quickly if you can. You don't have to do the, the tape thing and dust it. Just cover up this leather and spray that whole straw everything except for here and the ribbon if you got a ribbon most of them don't have ribbons they have little thin bands spray all that straw with strong hairspray let it dry don't touch it let it dry on the crown this is what i usually do i hang it you know put it on a, a banister or something like that you know on the stairs just like that because if you spray the crown you don't want the, the crown to get tacky and stick to the table all right Use that hairspray on those western straws. Stetsons and stuff are amazing, but when those straws get soft, they're going to start, you're going to kill it, and then you're going to have to throw it away real soon. So stiffen it up. You might need a lot of coats. If you like how it feels, you could stop, but I, you might need two coats, three coats, four coats, five coats. Uh, depends on how soft you want it. If you want it to feel like it used to be, it's like a glassy hard uh, coating. All right. Um, what are we getting? Number eight. Okay, you can long oval a hat yourself, okay? If your western hat is too tight, you can oval it by basically just pulling it over your knee like this. Just pull it. Don't jerk it, okay? Just grab it, increase pressure, increase pressure, increase pressure, pull. Okay? Lengthwise only. Okay, um, maybe some of the Asian guys might need a little bit more on the sides. Um, it's possible. Every person on earth has different types of shaped heads. Most of us have a little bit longer head. Uh, slightly longer or what they call long oval. If you're getting pressure in the front, don't run to get your hat stretched so quickly. There's a few things you could do. You could pull it out, pull it every day, give it a pull lengthwise, increase, be careful. That's it. Do it a few times a day. Get it to oval out yourself. 
can do this. The other thing is the reed. In the back, where the seam is in the bow, there's a little tube on the end there. The very edge part, the shiny part is a tube. Clip the reed right where the seam is there. Just cut it. It's right at the end. Get a, a scissor or a wire cutter and cut it. There's a piece of nylon fishing line in there that's giving you a circle of tension, a lot of tension, so you can't pull that tight hat down. Clip it, and then the hat will start stretching easy. But after you clip it, don't do this as hard. Be a little more gentle now, because without the reed, it's going to stretch much easier. All right? Stretching hat sucks. Do that stuff before you bring it to a stretcher. Just pull it over your knee. You can do it. Uh, a fedora is nothing. A western hat is going to take some time. Uh, number nine. What the heck did I write here? Yeah. The X system. All right. The X system for rating hats has no standardization. Nothing at all. Okay. As far it used to be that for X meant fur felt. Anything less than that was wool or a wool blend. Now it's a little bit blurred. It's sort of like that. A 4X can be all fur felt or it could be wool felt. That's a kind of the line. Figure some, sometimes it's a little above, sometimes it's a little below, but it, it used to be the lines. Uh, Stetson kind of changed that in the last you know, five or ten years or so. But um, the X system has no standardization. From one company to the next, it's completely different. 100X straw means nothing. You could just write it. You could say my straw is 100x, and it's maybe it's you sell three different straws. One's a little finer. You make that 100, the other one could be a 30x and one a 5x. It's all marketing. Uh, as they get finer in the weave, it's a machine thing. It's not woven by hand. You know, they get kind of softer, but they get more x's in them. But yeah, x's and straws, uh, just ignore them. They really mean zero. X's and felts. Uh, I'm going to say like this, once you get up to the 10x level, 10x, 20x, 30x, 100x, they all feel amazing. Uh, 6x's and 4x hats, well, they used to feel kind of like the same. Some of the 4x's are a little different these days, but yeah, you've got your standard fur felts and then you've got your real premium. 10x, 20x, 30x, uh, 50, 100, all those x's, it's a status thing. If you want to get it, it's cool, but... Um, the X thing, there's no standardization. It doesn't mean a lot. It's all marketing. So, uh, so just, you know, take it with a grain of salt and stuff, you know? It's like Gibson Guitars saying, okay, this has a, a, a less pole and this is a less pole plus top. Well, what makes it a plus top? Well, we say these are nicer tops, so these are plus top. They just create it. So the X system is completely different from every company. As the years go by, it changes. They market things according to the way they want to X them out. It's all just arbitrary. It, you know, it means nothing. So, um, sorry Stetson. Uh, I know there's Stetson people watching, but uh, you know, the educated consumer is the better consumer. They buy more stuff. So that's what it's about, is educating you people. Okay? You guys know what these hats are about. You're going to buy more of them. That's that's my theory. Okay. Raising the crown. Raising the crown is number 10. Open roads, ranchers, anything like a skyline, anything that has a cattleman's crease or a center crease for a, uh, like a Panama or a um, Fedora, they can hit you here in the top of the head. What happens is that crease juts into the crown, bangs you in the head, and the whole hat weight is up there. Okay, now there is a hack for this. All you have to do, steam the inside of the cattleman crease right here, not the sides here, these two parts that appear lighter, leave them cool. Steam just the inside, put your finger inside there and just raise the crown inside a little bit. Make a little sort of a, I don't know, like a sausage shape like this and push it up from within. Okay, so what you're going to do is steam it here. This part's going to get soft and you're going to push that up a little. Okay, you're raising the crown. Once you raise the crown, you could even get your head in there and trace around it. There'll be like this little hot dog shaped thing in there. So you're getting your hat deeper, but that bubble is inside of this cattleman's crease, which is this high in the shadows. Nobody will see that bubble. It just makes the hat lower and fit better.